All right, thanks, guys. I'm now joined by Tim Graham from The Athletic to um, dive into this a little bit more. Obviously, very serious allegations against Bills punter Matt Ariza. Um, you and I have both been in contact with the attorneys. I was able to talk to um, the accuser's attorney, Dan Gillian. Um, I know that you've also been in contact with attorneys from both sides. What have you learned about this uh, civil lawsuit so far and what new information is out there? Well, there's really not a lot of new information other than developments of what's going on with Matt Ariza and the Buffalo Bills. The fact that he's not going to punt tonight, the fact that he's not going to play tonight, he's not going to dress. Uh, and as my colleague at uh, the Athletic, Joe Biscaglia, pointed out, that when Matt Ariza arrived to the stadium today, he was not even wearing Bill's gear, yeah. uh, which could be significant. Uh, we'll see if he's on the sideline at all during the course of the game. That could be another indicator as to his fate on the team. Although, I wouldn't read too much into that right away because this could be a situation where even if they do want to keep him on the team, they may say, look, hide out in the locker room today. We don't need you on camera. We don't need you celebrating with your teammates or whatever. Just stay low. However, this could be a situation also where Matt Ariza is at the stadium with the Bills tonight because he's getting a ride to the airport and he's going to get a flight home and that's the last time you see him. Yeah, we're going to have to wait and see what uh – how the team decides to address this in uh, the postgame press conferences. Uh, Tim, I was able to talk to um, the accuser's attorney, Matt Gillian. I know that, or Dan Gillian, excuse me, uh, the accuser's attorney. I know that you were as well. What information about the Bills timeline of when they knew this, when they were informed of this, because the statement that the Bills gave out said that they were recently made aware of a civil complaint about Matt Ariza in October of 2021. Yeah, let's try to maybe establish a bit of a timeline yes. here because there has been some miscommunication yes. regarding this. Now, Carrie Armstrong, who is Matt Ariza's attorney, was on a San Diego television station last night. And when asked by the anchor if Matt Ariza had informed teams before the draft about his situation, uh, Kerry Armstrong said, you better believe he did. Mm -hmm. Well, he says to me today, about a, three hours ago when I talked to him, that he didn't hear the question right, that that's not the case, and that jibes with all the things that I had heard, especially coming from uh, my sources regarding the Bills not knowing anything about Matt Ariza and these allegations uh, before the draft. But, and this is something that I think has stuck with fans, the Bills did know about these allegations yes. when they made the decision to cut Matt Hawk uh, and this was just on Monday, and then the civil suit comes out three days later, that being Thursday. Um, in checking around with other league sources, because I think that this is important for fleshing out uh, the level of concern that you may have with the Buffalo Bills and whether or not they did their due diligence in the pre-draft process, uh, there are some... Uh, indications that maybe some other teams were aware and that well, why weren't the Bills then, in fact, uh, aware of that? Uh, why did Matt Ariza, given the fact that he has the strongest leg in the draft, fall down to the point where he was the third, uh, third punter taken in the draft as opposed to the first, mm -hmm. uh, given his special skills? Uh, so we do need to learn a little bit more about that. The fact that uh, it was reported in uh, the LA Times story that it was one of the worst kept secrets on campus uh, that this had happened. And another thing that I found peculiar in talking to Kerry Armstrong, who is Matt Arise's attorney, he was hired just six weeks ago. And to which I asked Kerry, uh, had you, or, or did Matt Arise have an attorney before you? And uh, Armstrong said no, that uh, he hadn't. And the reason being, and maybe this is indicative of What's the fact that he was totally caught unawares or thought that he was in the clear. Uh, but Kerry Armstrong, the attorney, said that Matt Ariza didn't feel like he needed an attorney. And so that is an interesting piece of the puzzle. Or was he just not prepared? And I also want to know, here's a missing piece for me, and I've reached out to uh, Matt Ariza's agent, uh, Joe Linta, who's a veteran agent, uh, Joe Flacco. He's also um, uh, represented some NFL coaches over the years. And Joe and I have a pretty good relationship, but I have not heard back from Joe since I've tried to get in touch with him since last night. Uh, and that to me is at least somewhat significant. It's not insignificant, mm -hmm. but I would like to know from Joe Linta what teams were told and at what point 
Did Matt Areza decide that he was just going to let this go and not tell people and just hope it went away? Or at what point he should have felt obligated to say to NFL teams, look, I have this going on. Because the police were investigating this as far back as October of 2021. So the idea that he didn't feel like he needed an attorney and yet he was under investigation, Kerry Armstrong told me that uh, the police didn't reach out to Ariza until recently. And of course he says that he was hired as the attorney uh, within the past six weeks, and the police finally reached out to interview Matt Ariza in that time. Uh, so that's quite a ways for the police not to interview a prime suspect um, in this case. Um, so a lot of things just not falling into place in terms of, uh, you know, if we're playing a Tetris game, right. so there's a lot of blocks that are out of place. Yeah, there's a lot of questions when it comes to the timeline. Who knew what? There's a lot of, you know, uh, he said, he said, kind of going out there right now. Um, I also reached out to Matt Ariza's agent last night and have not heard back. Um, I was able to talk to Dan Gillian, uh, the accuser's attorney, and I was trying to dig into exactly what this, um, this thorough examination, as the Bills put it in their statement that they released, what exactly went into this examination, what, in, what went into this investigation, who did they talk to, what information did they find out or we lack know thereof? that they didn't talk to the accuser or the accuser's attorney beyond their initial phone call yes. with the bill's legal counsel so the bill's thorough examination as they like to call it did not include talking to the accuser and that is not uncommon yes. i think but is it right and that's something You're that we heard throughout the deshaun watson case is uh, a team doing its due diligence without talking right. to uh the, the the party of the the, the alleged aggrieved party if you're going to say it's a thorough examination that's exactly what i was told dan gillian said that they did not the bills did not uh reach out to us for a statement at all um, they didn't ask for a statement from my client at all so and you know, past one initial phone call, that's that's where the communication ended between um, the accuser's attorney and the bills. So, all right, we got to take a uh, quick break here on Buffalo Kickoff.